Receive one from Charter Communications. For a non exclusive franchise uh, to provide cable television service within Lyon County, uh, fiber to home cable plant, broadband speeds up to 200, uh, mobile phone service, home phone service. Then the charter will be invested more than 158 million to expand broadband in Kentucky, which includes a private investment of at least 100 million of their own money. In Lyon County, the charter was awarded $373,182 373, to expand fiber to home broadband to 336 homes identified by the FCC as not having broadband. Uh, they expect construction of charter fiber plant to be complete by the end of. Swat. I've asked them if I can publicize this on Facebook. 
addition to it. So, so this is what John was looking for. No, okay. Mark's going to pull out of that area. He's got a little fiber in that area that he's not going to do anything in that area to have that. And that way he can do something else with it. So it's, 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 it's a good deal. It's just like an overview, but they've got a house by house by or something. So. Is, the email, is that the email I sent to you? I believe so. It was more the first one. Comments. See if he he was in here. See if he wants to speak before I move on. Visitor comments. I guess I just came here to the front. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, this this is Dick and I sit back there. This is Kevin. I said I do. 
come in for public speaking. It's not my thing. Didn't do it in high school. Frank can attest to that too. Uh, this is in response to a uh, physical court meeting of 12 9 21. Uh, it was brought into the uh, court's attention about a request for an increase in the impact rate. Uh, that was my business that requested it to take it up to $200 as opposed to the $150 it is now. Uh, of course, I speak to the sheriff out there. Uh, a lot of this is uh, this that increase from $150 to $200, which is on our NOL, our KSP Kentucky State Police Rotation District. That would be the first increase that that, that list so that we have seen of that in, in excess of seven years. Uh, the, the county, I realize that may not be pretty to the county's thing here, but the county is operating at 30 kind of lot for I think almost two years, I believe, is this evidence during the physical court meeting that the video that I saw. Uh, I, I apologize for not being able to attend that meeting. Uh, I was been diagnosed with COVID, it was only two weeks before me, so I didn't feel like it was best to show up. Uh, that being said, I don't feel as though this $200 that, that we requested was unreasonable uh, or too large of a jump. I have with me uh, the Kentucky State Police rotation rates that we have to turn in. And back in September of 21, we had to redo our inspection at that point and resubmit our rates. Those rates, again, we submitted to the State Police. They don't have a set rate for the call they go by, but they examine your rates. And if your rates are out of line, they then come back to you and say, hey, we feel like you're out of line, we need to go over this see why. Or they simply just, okay, we're good. Every time my rates have ever been turned in for 27, 28 plus years, it's okay, we're good. Again, this is the same one. This is a copy of that rate, if y'all would like to see it. It shows that $200 uh, request. It actually shows, others that it's a four dollars per mile and that can also be charged as well that we don't charge we don't pass that on to the county or any of these county calls uh, during that video while the sheriff's intends for a sure fine uh, there was a lot of information there that was maybe not exactly accurate or some information that was not exactly accurate uh, and i've got seven pages of notes which is probably way too many really to just go over uh, but the, the increase was in response to a loss of revenue and continually rising cost of operating the business. To operate this business, uh, to operate my business as compared to someone else's business is definitely different. Uh, for example, my record service is one of the larger record services in Western Kentucky. Uh, so my overhead is going to be significantly higher than another record service that maybe doesn't have as many trucks, as many as many employees, so on and so forth. So I have to keep an eye on these numbers to make sure that we are being profitable and fair and competitive in pricing and all this kind of good stuff. Uh, and I feel as though really we are. Otherwise, I don't feel as though I would have a successful business as what we currently seem to have. Uh, we've served this county for years. I uh, feel as though we've done a really good job and tried to do a good job and want to do and want to serve the county. Uh, in aid law enforcement with in this particular case impounds, removing accidents, and so on and so forth. Uh, we always try to step up and do well when, when the county or the community needs us. Uh, again, I really I don't know how to go about doing this other than I was told originally, uh, and it I, I, there's obviously some information I don't have prior to this meeting that I have that I've seen video of about the setting of the rates, but as best as I can tell from that video, it's the discretion of the sheriff to set these rates. Uh, I was told to come to the court and present my case to the court as to why my rate should be should go up and why it's considered fair and so forth. Uh, there are different constraints put on us on impound versus private code. I think that was a big deal that was brought up and hit on several times. Uh, for example, if you wait like you call me at <coughs> five o'clock in the afternoon and your vehicle's broke down at the five star over here and you get it towed to weekend performance. Uh, at that point, I can tell you, hey, wait, I'm busy. It's gonna be an hour and a half or so before I can get there to get it. And you, at that point, you can choose whether you use it or not. But other than the loss of that one call, there's no difference to me 
On our NOL rate, which is what we were going by in the county for the impounds, we the rules state that we, we have to try to provide that kind of priority. We have to try to respond within within a reasonable amount of time, typically 15, 20 minutes is what we're kind of looking for. It's, we don't necessarily always make that, but we you know we try. There's a list of equipment that's required from us to be on that rotation list that we have to have in addition to what would be required just to perform a private tow. There's there's requirements on insurance limits that are higher and different than I would have to have just to legally have my truck run on the road. Now it's not necessarily wise to operate it without that insurance, but it's not required. There's these tows are two different tows, and while it was a that seemed to be a, a really big point to be uh, being hit on, they, they have different requirements, different levels of commitment from us, and different your your operators have to be trained. We have to have team training to be on the rotation list. There's a operator for a team training is time incident management. We don't have to have that training to be private tows. There's just all kinds of different requirements. It's not the same tow, even though on face value it seems to be because you're moving a vehicle from point A to point B. That's it's not the same deal. Uh, really, you know, based on what the sheriff's coming out there, there doesn't seem to be there to be an issue now. For some reason, we're re ready to go to my the two hundred dollars. Well, what I said is I wanted to bring this to the fiscal court because it was such an increase. I met with the county attorney uh, about this issue, and I said this this is this is high. Uh, it's a higher increase than I've seen previously. Yes, in 06 2019 uh, first of all, I think the world of Marty and Hill High School together, uh, we may have a different opinion on this particular issue, but I'm okay with it if you all are. But the reason I brought it to your all's attention, you all through 06 2019 gave me the discretion to set the rules and regulations for this. Marty seems to think that that needs to be set by you all and not me. So that's. That's why I'm bringing it back. I'm the one that they fuss at. When the citizen contacts me and says, I want to get my vehicle out of impound, and right now it's $150, I'm already getting questions about, well, he told me last week, or another record service told me last week, and it was $85 when I called them, but it's $150 in the sheriff's office. They think it's the county charging them more than him. And I respect the fact that he's in business, and I, everything he said about his additional work requirements are true and they do cost money because I ran the record service for the Texas State Police so I totally respect the position he's in. I just came to you all for guidance uh, out of respect to you all because it was such a significant jump at one time. Um, and if it's a situation where when a citizen calls in direct for one, it's one rate that's a lot lower but when we call it's a higher rate I just need some guidance there from you all if you're all willing for that to happen. So because they look at it from to the county perspective, they look at it as, well, if I call them, it's one rate, but if you know if you all call them, it's double that or it's what's whatever. And so I do respect his position, and I'm not trying to, to down his business. As a matter of fact, I didn't. I probably did mention that I went to high school with him and I was friends with him at the last meeting, but I, I tried very particular not to mention his business uh, when we were discussing it previously. So I'm just at, I came to you all for guidance because that was what was suggested to be done. And I'm willing to do whatever you all want to do. I can do it myself based upon where we're at, but I don't feel comfortable going to that level unless you all are approval of it. Y'all represent the citizens just like I do. But a lot of these toes aren't just our citizens, too. Can I ask a question? Can. Brent, what do you have in your impound yard mostly? They're mostly, uh, there's two type, two classifications of vehicles. We have evidentiary vehicles that we have seized pursuant to a criminal investigation or a traffic investigation, you know, maybe like a fatality. We try not to have anything that doesn't run. So uh, those are vehicles where we have habitual violators that continue to operate on suspended license. They've had the registration and insurance canceled uh, through uh, uh, maybe not the clerk's office, but the, from the Department of Transportation and Transportation Academy. Uh, probably most, mostly of their criminals of some kind. Yes, sir. Okay. That's correct. Okay. And then he still, we don't take anything in uh, anymore with very limited exceptions. We don't take anything in that's a wreck that doesn't run, uh, that is a banned vehicle on the side of the road, or somebody that just requests a tow uh, for whatever. Those all still go to our NOL list, which, which he's on. 
Well, here's my take on it. I might be wrong, probably say it, but if they're a privilege, I don't care what they have to pay, to be honest with you. And I respect that. It's just the amount of money that we're going up, I just wanted you all to be okay with it. That's why I brought it to you in the first place. That's, yeah. the, only, that's the only reason I brought it to you. Do, do you know what, what was the percentage of local residents opposed to? No, out, sir. Out of I, I, can, I mean, we're not out on the interstate very much anymore, so it's not hardly anything. It's mostly local people. It's but they're criminals. Most. Most of the time, yes, sir. I mean, they're either they're either in charge of a criminal or traffic related type of offense. But now, if you get a criminal that's crashed the car, where does it go? It usually goes to get a slot or the other. Yeah, we don't want anything in our lot that doesn't run. He can get storage on that and deal with the insurance companies much easier than we can. And it takes up space in our lot that we don't have. If you recall, when we went to build our impound lot, we wanted it about as twice as big as it was, but we couldn't afford that at the time. So it's about half the size of the Franklin County Road Department. They actually made it a little bit bigger than what we originally thought it was going to be with not, not hardly any more money. So we just don't have the space, you know, with some of the military surplus assets that we have. So all those will go, still go to him. I guess my opinion is, uh, you know, we, I remember us talking about this before. Um, this was an idea you had and we gave you permission to run it. Fit. So I, I don't know that really we need to give an opinion unless you want us to run it. Um, so I, I don't really see that we would have an opinion either way. The only thing we've said is we want our businesses to be taken care of and not hurt. Now that's been my only opinion. And, and you said that last time, and I, I respect that. Uh, when I met with the county attorneys in his office and, and talked about this issue, he he suggested I bring it to the court. I thought that was a, a viable thing to do because it is above the cap that, that I had previously imposed based upon the ordinance that you, that I, I'm not oblivious to the fact that caps will increase as time goes up. And I'm certainly amicable to, I mean, inflation is 7% right now. So if, if it needs to go up, it can go up. It was just such a significant increase that I was thinking I was being duly diligent in bringing that information to you all. I think I basically raised the cap fee with the two hundred dollars in that one meeting. Well, he can. He has permission I, to do. That. I can. You all never did. Y'all didn't act upon it the last time I brought it before you. I just wanted to be clear. This is not like a hand retaliation. It was, was brought up multiple times. I said I, I did say that last time because the words that came out of Marty's mouth when I when I talked to him was, "Is I'm losing money. I had to do something." And and I. I don't believe he was malicious in that, but I just said, as I as I'm still standing here today, I, I don't want to believe it's Rick or Duty, but I understand that uh, each of these impounds typically creates a day or two more storage as well. So when you take that impound away, yes, the impound was 150, but when you take the impound to a different facility. That record service now loses that sort of rate. Our sort of rate is 45 a day because of different constraints placed on it as opposed to the counties. We can't refuse 25. Right. We can't refuse access to people. We have to accommodate you. We can charge a fee for it. We have to accommodate you. The liability of it, our insurance costs, all this kind of great stuff that goes along with all this stuff. But so, while yes, the 150 was still there, you lost that 45 to 90 dollars when the stores become longer than they were too. So it's a loss of revenue in a, you know, Society or atmosphere of rising costs. I mean, it's it's something that just has to be addressed. It just, you can't do it and and with the loss of revenue and maintain it as well. One of the things that we did do for Marty and Amy P. Tolan, who were the only two on our list, is he he came to me right after we did this, and he, as you all know, you only meet once a month normally, and he didn't want to wait for thirty days to get his payment or longer than 30 days in some cases, and I totally understood that. And so I came back to you all and got permission from you all uh, through a motion that was passed by the court to be able to write him the check immediately out of the fee account so he didn't have to wait for that long. And that was done in an attempt to kind of offset some of the, the you know, the time lapse there that he would, but obviously it, it's, you know, the fact that he's not, He's missing out on his storage of forty five dollars a day versus ours of twenty five dollars a day. I respect what he's saying, but I do know that we did that 
solely at their request so that we could get him his money returned to him without having to wait for 30 days. Well, I'm like, wait, hey, I'm a firm believer in helping our businesses here in Lyon County, so I, you know, I don't know. That's my would, would you all do this? Would you pass a resolution? Would you consider a resolution? Just something that you acknowledge that, that you, uh, you're, you're in support of that, and you're, you're okay with me raising those, those rates? Would you do that, Judge? I'm not interested in it. No, I, you have the ability to do it. It's your choice. Uh, but now you got three more here to do it. To raise it to 200? I, I'm not asking for a motion. I'm just asking for a resolution. Uh, okay, no, uh, no, no. supporting supporting the raising of that. And I understand completely what you're asking for. And this is totally germane to what you're talking about. You all can't do that in this meeting. Because it's not on the agenda. This is a special meeting, so we're we're completely able to hear you all's you know, concerns, but they can't pass any items. That's this. my original concern. My original intent was, as I was told, to come to the court to, act, to address the court about the fee. However, based on that video I saw, it's not the court's place to make the fee. It's it, it, it is by ordinance. My reason, my deal. But as I explained previously, and even to them pre before. And today, the reason I brought it to you is, is just when the public fusses, they fuss at our office because of the difference. And I'm okay with it if you all are, but I felt obligated to bring it to you all because it was such a significant increase. That's where I'm at with it. And Marty, I just want to follow up. It's a unique meeting today because we're in a special call meeting. If it was a normal meeting, then Sheriff, you already know this. And it can be brought up in another meeting, is that right? It absolutely can. I just don't want you all to think that we're precluding action on this. We're just prohibited from discussing anything besides these 21 items that we've got in front of us. So we can hear, we just can't act upon anything. Well, is there really anything that you need to hear? Just comments and concerns. Yeah. Just what you're saying. You know? I would be willing to, to draw up a draft resolution for the county attorney to look to see if you all would support doing it at the next meeting and put it on your agenda if you think you can do that. And if you don't support that, I'll have to go back and and uh, figure it out on my own. But I, I'm not trying to pass off my responsibility on the court. I'm just trying to be diligent and transparent with you all about what I have going on out of something that you previously had passed, uh, you know, action on by the court. <clears throat> You're raising the $50, isn't that, is it that just that much far out of reach on everybody else? To give you an example, uh, of course, I, you're not allowed to break businesses, break businesses on the residential list and or just in commerce. We're not allowed to call each other to discuss race or range of rates and all this kind of stuff if it's not fair to the public. It, it eliminates competition and all this stuff. But my record service goes out and we pick up rent vehicles for uh, entities like IA, which insures our watching, Hope Mark, and Transit Pros, and all those places. And what they do is we go to the record services and pick up rents that have been recovered. It's not in town, but it is their rate that they turn in and they are, that they go off of, off of this piece of paper right here that they give to the state police, uh, which is this space which you're not to exceed these rates. Uh, I know it was stated in, in the meeting multiple times that the $200 is unheard of, and that's not the case uh, in these other instances or places, which I'm, I'm only speculating at this point here that they then, re, when they go to their in town, that they then refer to their rates that are on this list, which are higher than mine, which they use at that point. I, I can't tell you who's a dollar, who they are, but I can tell you that the $200 is definitely not an out of the realm of reason for these types of stuff. Oh yeah, they do pay. That's a different thing to schedule. That's a different thing to schedule. Those rates, Marty, if they go once a year to the state. Typically, it's once a year. We did this in September, and I actually even held off for the rest of the year for the county's uh, situation uh, and didn't didn't go off of this from September until December. I, I waited until I could talk to Grant, be made more aware of what was going to go on. What if, what if these other record services if you act with them? Actually, if you, if you rise again, it gets to nine, ten dollars a gallon. I mean, it's, I mean, it's, I mean exactly. And that wasn't even the case. It was unheard of when he first started talking to me about it. So it does make it more legitimate now. That's part of the reason I said some of the things I said outside of Marty's few minutes ago. 
But at the time that he told us about that this was coming, um, I contacted the state police, the guy that did the record list at that time. Those are those rates he's talking about now that have since been approved by the state police. They were approved at that time. You're mine were. You're when I not when I not when I called them, they told they told me that they hadn't got the new rates approved. Here's the date on the you know the deal that goes. There's the date on the special. That's the date on the inspection. The date the rates were actually approved. They when I contacted them. Probably the end of October. You sure they did? I understand you ran some right. time. It, it was still the, the same. same words, right? Right. He, 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 I, mean, I don't doubt that they're approved now, but at the time that I called, they weren't. And they just gave me a list of the rates. They didn't tell me what businesses they were or anything. And so that's what I took when I was seeking some legal guidance on, hey, world, does this seem to be higher than normal? Do you think? Court's going to be okay with this because I was already, you know, receiving some complaints. I don't doubt that he's worth and his men and women are worth this. It was just where we were at with this process. This is a new thing that the General Assembly has put on us uh, to allow us to do these things, and that's why I brought it to the court. It's not, it's not overly burdensome. Uh, it's added duties, it's added revenue, but at the same time, we still try to we try to support them. But we don't take everything. There are things that they do, but it was just such a significant jump. That's why. I, that's why I wanted to come to you. Well, I'm just surprised that you don't go back, say three months from now, and say I got to raise it again because the fuel has done skyrocket. Well, that in that that scenario, it may be something that has to be looked at. But this this was done, and why I was here to discuss was from the this morning of uh, the original deal, which was prior to the rise of fuel prices that are starting to happen now. This was done. You know, like I said, we hadn't had an increase on this this rate. Probably in Texas County for mostly two years. I think it was right at two years. That's Previously, right. seven years that this rate that we were using had not been increased at, at all. Uh, and by my fault, you know, I was slow to respond and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, but and then once I saw the loss of revenue from the storage that comes with each of these tows, typically the tow itself was the one fifty. Then, like I said, you lose the storage at that point. That loss of revenue to lose to be losing revenue and increasing cost, you know, insurance costs go up every year. You know, we we had an insurance increase of like nine thousand dollars over our liability insurance policy for these two years with zero claims. I mean, you can't control that type of stuff there. It just does. Uh, Marty, do you have a number on how much revenue you lost? I've got. It's not an exact number by no means for sure. But just based off the numbers that were given here in the meeting, uh, on the video, uh, I think I've got a quick, it was right around, I think the, Brent Mike, you're, you're basically, your your net profit out was like $9,564. Right? That's actually $25 a day. My rate's $45 a day. Of course, in theory, I would only got 50% of the impounds based off averages, not you know, because the members could, could totally misconstrue that first time call and so forth. But you're looking at, you know, essentially like anywhere from nine to thirteen thousand dollars for some lost revenue in storage alone, based off averages. You know, so it's it's really hard to say exactly without knowing the. Was your towing the same? Would your towing rate have been the same at that point? Would it have been at that point? Our towing rate was the same. Would have been washed. That the rate was looked at as a retaliatory rate. I don't really want to retaliate against. And that may have been a poor choice of words on my part. And no. I said rate for music, just it's more simply responsive. In response to the fact that lost revenue, we need this 
percent I mean, honestly, it's kind of more anyway. But, but the actual increase itself, the 200 dollars increase on those impounds, when you take away the fact that prior to that, it was 150 plus 45, 495 for two days, you know, two, what, 240? Not that much of an increase at all. I mean, it's just something to replace the revenue that's going And other than that, I pretty well. That's all I can tell you. Well, I'm going to ask a really dumb question. Shoot it. So, I like to think. So, if the sheriff's office decides to stay at Point Dick, and you, you get a call from them, can you, can you deny that now? They're not even calling me now. Uh, Brent had sent out an email to tell the deputies to not call Stennis, and then when they call in, they simply call in as a officer. We, yeah, we still use it for other calls on the NOL list, but for impound lot calls, they're supposed to be calling for officer requests and the only other record service on the list is MP. That way, he doesn't lose his spot in the rotation. So, MP Tony is the only other one we have that's on the list that we can uh, use. Now, we've had some other record services approach us, but they're not even in business normally. They're just people that have rollbacks, so I've been hesitant to do to allow that at this point. Oh, and I'm vehemently opposed to the bending down without the record service. Why would we not yeah. call him? Is my question. Why would we not call him? Yeah. We call him for everything else, but it, he's at the point where he's charging two hundred dollars until until I, I got some direction from you all on what we were going to do. I didn't feel comfortable raising that cap myself. Huh. That's so why I'm here. That's the whole reason I brought this up. So why is it's his responsibility to set that cap run? You all gave me that responsibility in the ordinance. That's exactly right. So you better fix that then. Y'all have any other questions for me in regards to that? Do y'all need would y'all like to see or do y'all need to see the state police form or can you even see it, please? Oh yeah. That's a I mean that's an open record. That's fine. All right. Yeah. Is that our copy? Yeah, y'all can have that's our copy to give to the you can have guys. Guys. they can receive that's the additional to the requirements.
And the way down right, it's going to take you care of it. And it's fine with me. For $40, I'll take the cheap, that's a pretty cheap piece of equipment. But, uh, it's something that we'll use that. And we're we need it a lot down there in the tornado area, aren't we? Huh? We need it a lot where the tornado is. Yeah, there's, there's several of roads that we're going to have to go fix. And some of them are new roads that we put in on some new roads that, you know, it just, uh, we've got them where they're, they're draining, but there's stuff in them we can't get out. You know, what we used to do, we try to cut a tire and put a cable on it. I mean, I'd have to crawl in them before and got the cable for them. I ain't doing that anymore too low. And I ain't gonna cause a public now, so I don't like that spot. But uh, this thing here, you just shove it, you put something, you're doing a 12 inch pipe or whatever, up to a 36, you put the appropriate paddles on it and you get it done. Uh, we got a big grind yesterday. Tell you we got to bring that in one day. We, we, we've seen that we can do it in one day. I think we're, the last time we were trying to pull, we ran in that one day. But working the 6 2 30 shift, everybody still got home before 5 30. So, you know, it, it, that worked out really good. We got everything in there. I mean, the special request, we took period at last. The last thing we did, we took period at last. So, uh, on that, the roads in the tornado area. I went and uh, did the initial eval of those. Met with FEMA yesterday, maybe, and uh, went over that. We've got 12 roads. Um, I think it's going to require what they call two projects because uh, I think they can only go up to eight to ten roads per project. Uh, there's there's some roads that, of course, are right smack down in the middle of the tornado. I think it's just going to possibly fill up again. 
Let me ask you this. Uh, I want to flex on everybody. Uh, we have two years to spend that now. Can, can we put that out? Which one? The, like uh, the, 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 or the, the, the one down here that gets bad grief. Can, can we put that out for maybe next fall? Because no, the, the, flex payment, the flex for paving needs to be spent that each year. year. And the flex for the culverts need to be spent each year. Are you okay. So, so we, we're going to try to go ahead and go forward with that. So we are going to do the we put them out. Uh, are we going to do the replace the two big ones right there, Barry Alford? If they need it, I are guess we'll have to. Are we able to do it? Yeah, we'll have to. I mean, those will have to be put together in sections. They're both together style because they're so big. So, you know, we'll have to have. Uh, they're going to need the next 20 years. We have to, 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 to put those in to be able to pick them up. But, uh, we get 80000 and uh, we have to pay 20%, and they don't, don't pay up to 80. So yeah. that's why we want it. It would probably be a good year to do it because we're not doing any other culverts right now. Well, I'll have to reprice re re them because when I priced them before, oh, yeah. They're we, gonna run, we run it, that was a different. I mean, those two right there cost. $40,000. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just, we'll go out there and measure everything again uh, sometime when you're free and, and send it here and see what it looks like. And if it's if it's beyond what we can do, we'll, we'll bring it up two years, do half of it. Do half of it. That, that'll be my recommendation. We might do half of it. Maybe we make it we'll, we'll just see what it looks like yeah. before we make that decision. I'd like to get it all done at once. All right, we'll tell you do. This will be the first in the reading of Lyon County, Kentucky, Resolution 02-2022. Because this is a resolution, I will be reading it in the summary form only. This will be the only reading of Lyon County, Kentucky, Resolution 02-2022. Lyon County, Kentucky, Resolution 02-2022 is a resolution of the County of Lyon, Kentucky, approving an interlocal cooperation agreement between the County of Lyon, Kentucky, and other parties thereto regarding the Kentucky Association of Counties Interlocal Finance Cooperation. And let me just say, before I read this, what this is, is you all resolving to enter into an agreement with CAFO for your debt borrow. It's just a resolution to enter into their program based upon statutory authority. Whereas public agencies in the state have experienced it <clears throat> and are continuing to experience difficulty in economically funding or financing various governmental purposes at reasonable cost, and whereas public agencies will enter into it or heretofore enter into an interlocal cooperation agreement dated as of May the 1st, 2010, attached hereto as Exhibit A, the agreement is authorized under Section 65.210 through Section 65.300, inclusive, of Kentucky Revised Statutes as amended, which authorizes public agencies to cooperate and act jointly in exercising any and all powers, privileges, and authority capable of exercise 
by such public agencies in their respective individual capacities. And whereas in order to provide a vehicle for economically funding and financing various governmental purposes of public agencies in the Commonwealth of Kentucky, the Kentucky, Associ Kentucky Association of Counties and Local Finance Program has been or will be established under the agreement and under the program the Kentucky Association of Counties and Local Finance Cooperation has been established. Whereas the program will benefit the public health, safety, and general welfare of the citizens of Lyon County, Kentucky. And whereas in order for the public agency to participate in the program, must enter into this agreement as prescribed by section 651250 of the Kentucky Revised Statutes, which provided for the creation of the program. Now therefore, may it resolve by the Fiscal Court of Lyon County as follows. I want to draw you down section two, approval of interlocal cooperation agreement. The agreement among this public agency and the other public agencies that will enter into or have entered into the agreement is hereby specifically approved in the form attached here to as exhibit A, recognizing that such agreement has been or will be approved by the Attorney General of Kentucky as a part of my section 65.260 of the Kentucky Revised Statutes. This has been the first and only reading of Lyon County, Kentucky Resolution 02-2022. a motion for three and a half. Second. Second by Mr. Fitzgerald. I give it to Jeff. Oh, yeah, give yeah, it to Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> give it to Jeff. <laughs> Jeff seconded it. <laughs> give it a point. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed nay. The jail budget is in here. Show that received. I saw that. I got to tell you. I just told you once. Auburn got me. Yeah. Who's the same thing? Did we? That's the same thing. All right. That's received, Clark. Uh, the next item of business is Jailer Pay. Um, the Jailer has presented a letter. Thank you. 
Trophy D. Lee, Finance Officers, Treasurers, Clerks, and Sheriff's Reports Received, Texas to the Claims. Said he said it to us in January that I don't know this we saw it, but she's gonna make sure that we didn't pay it and just didn't get it. So either way we'll get it on the next one. Any issues on the claims? Uh, one of the claims in there of course is Deem the claims to be paid, please. Uh, anything on the magistrates? Appreciate everything. Everybody's done that on tornado part. They've done a great step. They've done an excellent job. I'm amazed that we have that support. I am too. We, it, and I'll tell you, you know, Blake Riley. Two people on hiring. We can go into executive session if we need to move it on. I can just go out there. Um, one is Aiden Waters. I know you know him, and I would like to suggest that he be hired at the park uh, at Tim Dogger now. Um, he would start probably in the, once he gets out of school. So it's, it's only going to be two or three months that. Sure. 
trainings and all that stuff. He would work two days a week. Uh, so it, it won't be a huge burden on the budget. It stays within the budget that we have. Uh, so I'll make that motion to the second by Bobby. And I'm sorry. Thank you.